Good evening and uh, welcome to the June 9, 2015 regular called board meeting of Fairfield County School Board of Trustees. The um, public notification of the meeting was in order. Thank you for sending that PDF and we have a confirmation of a quorum as we have five of seven. I will uh, entertain a motion to enter executive session for legal personnel and contractual matters. Second. Thank you, Ms. McDaniels, Hartman. All those in favor, signify by raising your right hand. We'll reconvene no later than 6:30. Motion to exit executive session during which no action was taken. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Second. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Those in favor of exiting executive session for public session signify by raising the right hand. We've got five. Thank you. We'll move to uh, once again welcoming all to the June 9, 2015 regular call board meeting. We'll move forward with the Pledge of Allegiance and the moment of silence. Y'all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. standing for a moment of silence and reflection. Thank you. Move on to the approval of the agenda. Thank you, Ms. McDaniel. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Those in favor of the agenda as presented, please signify by raising your right hand. Got one, two, three, four. Opposition. Abstention. And public comment. Madam Chair, I've received no public comment for this evening. Thank you. We'll move to the superintendent's report. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the staff uh, who were involved in putting together the Hall of Fame banquet on uh, May 23rd. Um, I think Ms. McDaniel, uh, you attended, uh, and I think that might have been it uh, in terms of board members who attended. Uh, and I'll tell you that it was a uh, it was an absolute first class affair. Um, I think all of the honorees, uh, uh, you know, felt uh, felt like royalty. I mean, I, I tell you, they felt very good. And I had an opportunity to speak to a couple of them since the event, uh, in addition to some community members, and, uh, and, and, and uh, we, we did first class. Very proud. Um, also, the Fairfield Center High School graduation for, and I, all of you were in attendance there. Uh, I'd like to thank the staff for doing an outstanding job. Uh, I was a little concerned about, about parking uh, with construction going on and, and, and teachers here and all the traffic, uh, but the resource officers did an outstanding job of getting people directed where they needed to go. Uh, everyone was in and out relatively quickly. Uh, I think from start to finish, we might have been there maybe 50 minutes, uh, and, and that's, uh, that's a great thing. Uh, and also, I'd like to recognize the class of 2015 uh, for amassing uh, approximately $6.5 million in scholarship money. That is, that is, a, that is a significant increase from last year. Uh, it's really, uh, and it's the guy that has continued to, uh, to push our students to, to do even better, and we're looking to surpass that amount on next year. Oh, 
Mr. Lee, before you leave that item, um, and I'm going to commend you because I got a lot of a lot of good responses regarding the um, not responses but um, statements regarding the graduation. But in um, reference to the scholarships, I was saluted, um, the class salutatorian is not in school. So if you got any guidance counselor that can make contact with her, I'm trying to work with her and try to try to help her get in. But if you got any of those guidance counselors that can reach out to her, there is no reason that salutatorian from 180 students is not in school and really should have a full ride on scholarships. So if you could do that, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, okay. And, and I've had a conversation with her as well. And she's okay. Been right. yeah, we've had a conversation. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'll tell you this, Ms. McDaniel. My last conversation with her, um, and, and you know, she did she did have some scholarship money. Actually, she had an eight thousand dollars scholarship. She uh, school escapes me right now. Um, it was in Virginia, but she needed to pay ten thousand yeah. out of her pocket that they yeah. couldn't afford. Yeah. Yeah. But she should have had in state scholarships. And, and I, I, you know, and I think part of the problem is, you know, there was, you know, I'm not quite sure how many schools she applied to. Uh, she, she indicated that, you know, she's interested in maybe uh, enrolling in the nuclear program at um, uh, Venice Tech. And so I think part of that maybe that that's her backup plan. And so, uh, sometimes they don't want to leave home as well. But yeah. Make it work in she's going to be fine. Like, like, she'll get somewhere. Get somewhere. <laughs> um, Moving along, Mr. Reed. Yes, yeah, uh, and, and moving along, you know, last meeting I presented uh, some issues that we have with our current salary setting. Uh, and, and just to recap what I presented last time, uh, there was a study done in 2011, uh, and we ended up adopting parts of what was presented from that study. Uh, parts of it we didn't adopt, and, and so there were several inconsistencies in the salary study uh, as it currently stood. Uh, what we ended up doing was to go and look at the current salary study, uh, part the, the current salary schedule relative to what was recommended in 2011, and primarily sought to adopt what was recommended in 2011. Uh, uh, there were some issues in terms of the increments between steps. Uh, whereas they recommended a 1.5 or 3 percent increase, uh, we were doing kind of a hodgepodge of increments, uh, 1.5 in some respects, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.2. It was kind of it, it was kind of all over the map, and so we wanted to bring some consistency to that. Uh, I've already submitted uh, in, in, in the information the salary study that we have proposed, which is primarily what was proposed back in. 2011. Uh, as I said, uh, this study uh, was done several years ago, uh, so it may not be totally up to date, uh, but I think it brings some consistency to our current schedule. Uh, Ms. McDaniel had some question about uh, some of the changes that we um, that, that were done to the recommended schedule, and so I sent that out as well so you can see uh, basically what was adopted uh, back in 2012. Uh, and what was adopted, uh, we are recommending be adopted currently. Okay. Uh, to implement uh, what was adopted back in 2011 and some other modifications, uh, to increase the teacher salary schedule in year 0, 1, and 2, uh, as indicated on the information that you have received. Uh, in addition to uh, giving uh, exempt non-instructional employees um, a, a, a $2,000 um, uh, stipend, if you will, uh, for earning doctorates uh, and a $1,000 stipend for earning uh, a specialist degree. Um, the total cost of implementing that, uh, we estimate uh, before benefits is somewhere around $375,000. Um, uh, once we add in benefits, uh, then it's going to be somewhere around five hundred thousand dollars to implement um, all those recommendations. Any, any questions, Madam Chair? Yes, and I do appreciate um, us getting the actual schedules, but I still couldn't quite determine specifically what. Um, 
hadn't done and what hadn't changed. So can we be specific about um, can we be specific about those changes on? So Ms. McGann, if, if you look at the scale uh, that, that that kind of gives you the explanation and you see, for example, 1010 says uh, FY12 MG2101 plus increase. Okay, are you, are you looking at that document that I sent you after the request? No, no. Oh, it's not the one that was in the in board docs? No, no, what, what I'm sending you, that's an explanation. So it is basically the same, it's the same document that was in board doc, except I sent you and the board an explanation uh, that really talks about what adjustments would be to the current schedule. Oh no, when you send it? Same big as for Mm. I didn't see that. You sure? I'm probably. You got it, Explanation? That would be the board You find the little statement that you had up in this schedule? No. No. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought you had like a written, a written um, statement to indicate specifically. Okay. So, okay. So look, looking at looking at that schedule, Mr. McDaniel, if you see 1010, 1020, and 1030, when it says FY12 MGT 101, 102, 103, that means we adopted what MGT recommended back in 2012 for grades. 101, 102, and 103. So anywhere you see FY12, that means we adopted what MGT recommended. Every place you see FY16, that means we did not adopt what MGT recommended. And I'm proposing that we do adopt what MGT recommended. So if you were to give us the salaries of all the employees in a district, we would be able to identify to identify them based on years of experience. I still can't find that thing. But about, um, years of experience um, on the old salary schedule. And that's what and that's what we currently will be paying them. And then look at what you recommended for twenty sixteen and then that will show us specifically what what they'll be making next year if we approve the um, recommendation. Okay, not 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 quite. Okay. You know one thing and this was a sense of uh, Okay. Can you tell me what date you said that's on? I'm kind of pulling it up and... Uh, I, I, I'm not looking. I don't have... First, I, last Thursday and Friday. Why is it not in board dollars? Yeah, I didn't send it in board dollars because this was just something extra that you asked. And just an extra explanation that you wanted. It came from you or from... Um, came from me. And the reason why the board dollars was like that is because I wanted to provide you this information earlier than board dollars went out. And so that's why I sent you this information earlier. Yeah, but it still should have been in there. I just sent it to you. You didn't? Thank you. You sent it to the Yahoo or to the district? Yahoo. Okay, thanks. Whatever came up first. <laughs> well, honestly, I guess Yahoo. Okay. And so, Ms. McDaniel, to answer your question, you know, and this was a, I, I guess, a sense of debate, uh, a point of my arrival. As the rather, all employees were being paid based on steps of being paid based on years. And, and so they aren't necessarily the same thing. For our teachers and, 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 and our hourly employees, it's based solely on years. So if you have 13 years, you're at step 13. Um, when it comes to those, exempt employees and no salary employees is not necessarily the same. And so this schedule was structured based on what they want to determine to be steps and not years. Theoretically, Ms. McDaniel, the, the way this is structured, everyone doesn't necessarily move up a step as teachers do every year. And so you don't necessarily go from step four to step five. We have to put some things in place, and I hope to have those things in place by next year. But but that's the difference between having a schedule that's structured based on years of experience and a or a schedule based on steps. 
And so some employees who may have, when I first arrived in the example, there were some employees who said, I have 15 years experience superintendent. And, and, and this was established before I got here. But I'm only on step seven. Should not be on step 15. And, and if you are a teacher, because you had 15 years, you'd be on step 15. Um, but if you are an exempt employee, exempt employee uh, or simply a salary employee, um, that did not necessarily coincide. So you aren't able to look, Mr. Dane, and ask your question and say, this person had 15 years experience, so they would be on step 15. That is very confusing. Which schedule are you looking at when you had the little, the little, because um, I've opened all three of them and I don't see the one where you've had the, the notations. What, what, what's your question again, Ms. Manette? Which schedule are you looking at where you noted the differences in the, in the, um, in the sales? Are you talking about the schedule? Are you talking about this schedule? The one that I emailed to you? I just opened the ones I got from Ms. Um, Reed and I don't see that one in there. I remember seeing it, but I don't see it now. Okay, that, that's right there, Ms. Reed. Yeah, that it's the one, yeah, I just sent that one. It's the first page. It has Fairfield County School District, FY1516 proposed, and it has scale reference as the second column. Okay, I, one of them says Fairfield modified, one says proposed salary schedule, and one says proposed teacher. Proposed salary. Look at that one. I think I sent you that one first. Okay, they're all in the same email. Was there a separate email? I think it was Under, seven. It was separate. I sent yeah, two emails. Email. I just sent you two. One, the first one is the one that's in. And it says proposed salary schedule at the bottom, or in the name of the PDF. It, it says proposed salary schedule, Mr. Daniel, with references. With references. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's the. I'm going to see one dated June the 4th at 456. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I got that one open, but it's not showing those. Are we going to hold on this thing? Madam Chair, um, what I had a question from last time that was explained, uh, primarily Dr. Green talked about the teachers as far as the first two years um, were lower than Columbia, New Richland County, Lexington County in the basic areas. Um, and then you said you're going to do basically, you know, start looking at a salary study and some suggestions. But um, to do something like this and without, I feel like the the board as a full board needs to sit down and study this more. It took a lot of years before they even put this one in place prior to me being on the board. Uh, like you said, this was put in place in 2011, mm -hmm. which was prior to me going on the, on the board. And I just feel like we need to put more time into this. You're talking about a lot of money. And, um, uh, everybody's on a step rate where they've got, you know, they're getting a raise already, right? Yes. Okay. So I just feel like we need to, you know, take more time to study this as a board, and that's what I'm asking the board to do. I like that. Put on the record, please. Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Just so I can respond to Ms. Hartman. Ms. Hartman, so basically, what, what I'm recommending is that the board adopt what was recommended by MGT back in 2011. So as I'm not necessarily so this isn't a new study. I mean, it was a very extensive study back in 2011. MGT made recommendations based on market analysis uh, as to what they would recommend we do. Um, and so we did not adopt what MGT recommended. But I don't know the reason why they didn't. And we get this Friday and we're supposed to understand all this. That's awful soon as far as I'm concerned. You know, to adopt something like that this large of an increase 
all and we don't understand it does not make any sense we get it friday and then we expect it to vote on it on tuesday you do get that friday i mean i said that before friday i, I said that early in the week mm -hmm. it was I, I didn't get it well maybe wednesday i mean i, I yeah you get it friday I just feel like we all need to sit down and all discuss it um, and understand what we're doing before we adopt something like this. Okay, that well, can be your recommendation. To do last time, and I don't know why they left, did, did it differently, and didn't include it then. Is okay. Um, since we're in the middle of discussion and we don't have a motion in a second, let, let's move forward um, correctly by uh, getting a motion and a second on the floor. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we adopt the uh, salary study as the uh, superintendent's recommending, uh, just for purposes of furthering discussion. Thank you, Mr. Frick. Second. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Anyone have further discussion points or questions? Madam Chair, what, when does this take effect? Would it be for this upcoming budget year, or would it, when, 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 when we start paying this salary scale if it goes into effect? Yeah, yeah, theoretically, um, but I, I would I would expect it to take effect uh, next fiscal year. Next, yeah, yeah, the coming fiscal year. Starting in July. July, yeah. But Miss, so, Madam Chair, so we do have time I, for discussion. Just more. A I'm sorry, Mr. Jackson. Have I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, I just want to be sure that I understand the motion. And um, could you explain so I know exactly what the motion is? Yeah. My, my motion is just, just to approve it for so, so we could further the discussion. We, we got a little out of line and we we're just trying to get back on track with our, our normal procedure, that's all. So, so we, we, we're not voting on it at this time. I just made a motion so we could continue the discussion we started. That was it. Sorry. Um, so you're saying it won't start till July? Yes. So we have time to really discuss it further if we wanted to. Because, you know, and still go in place before July. This is our June meeting, so it will Okay, so you're saying next, well, I thought you said next July. Okay, then we don't have time. So, Madam Chair, the cost to increase this, and from what I'm hearing, the people who are going to benefit the most is going to be people with doctorate who more than likely are not face to face with our students. It is part of the budget that we are currently about to approve. Is that for me? Yeah, I can yeah. yeah I, I, I'll address that now, Chair. Um, first of all, Ms. McDaniel, I, I would say that the people who are going to benefit from this, uh, as being suggested, as having most of the doctorate, doctors is, is inaccurate. I said that uh, what we're recommending is that there is a, a supplement added to current schedule where these uh, exempt non instructional staff uh, receive a $2,000 supplement for having a doctorate. But we we're probably not talking about a lot of folks. Uh, so that's not who's going to benefit mostly. And if you look at the schedule, Ms. McDaniel, probably three quarters of, 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 the, of the grades on the schedule were not fully adopted as recommended by MGT. Now, when I asked you if I had the, the, the salaries of the people in the district, and I look at their salaries, and I match them to the schedule, I don't know what kind of round and round and round about the response I got, but if that's the case, then I should be able to look at the current salaries and look at the salary schedule and be able to map it. And I ask you if, 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 if that is possible. And so my answer to that, Ms. McDaniel, is how would you determine what step someone is at? It's going to be on the information you give them. If you, you give me the information on Ms. Hartman and Ms. Hartman, and you don't even have to give me her name. But Ms. Hartman is, which to me is crazy because, anyway, Ms. Hartman is um, uh, uh, falling in sale with a nine, a grade nine, or whatever you use it to build your scale. Then when I look at 
the schedule, then that's what she should be following and that's what her salary should be. So I'm asking you, if I had that information, would I be able to map it to the schedule right here that you're giving us and you're asking us to approve? And so what I'm telling you, Ms. McDaniel, is just because Ms. Hartman has nine years experience doesn't mean she's at step nine. You're going to give me the step and you're going to give me the years of experience or whatever it is that you're basing, basing it on on the schedule and then I should be able to map it. And see, that's what Ms. Hartman is talking about. See, you're not even, even, even exactly sure about this. I'm schedule. very sure. Yeah, I'm then sure. you should be able to tell me yes or no whether or not I can take um, any employee's grade and, and, and years of experience or whatever you're using to determine their salary and map it out. And so, right now you can't do that because they're all over the place. They don't match. If that was the case, Ms. Um, Reed, it would cost more than five hundred thousand dollars to implement, and then you wouldn't have money to give extra to people who have uh, PhDs. The question wasn't about the math. The math. The question was, can you match them? They can be matched if the salary study is adopted in its entirety. Apparently, it wasn't and the salaries are in different spots. So therefore you can't under the current salary, which is salary schedule, which has not fully been implemented or adopted that MGT presented in 2011. What we're trying to get implemented is a consistent schedule that yes, everybody could be presented with the schedule. Everybody would know what everybody would make if they knew the step, the consistency being brought to match what was presented by MGT in 2011. And that sounds good, Ms. Reed. But all I'm asking for is to be able to verify. That's all I'm asking. And, and, and Madam Chair, and, and Ms. McDaniel, I, I understand your question, and, and I think what you, are, what you are seeking is for me to say that you can look and, and, and see that someone had 16 years experience and determine that they'd be at step 16. I would like to be able, be able to verify the validity of the fact that folk are not being paid on this schedule because you're saying that whoever made the determination of the people's salaries are not in line with the sales that's on the schedule. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just asking to be able to verify where folk, where folk are based on the schedule for 2011 and then where they are based on the schedule for 2016. Madam Chair, I think that when it comes to teachers' salary, it's going to be there. Okay, they, they teach, they have taught 16 years. It's going to, it's going to show 16th year. I think Mr. Green, what he's saying is that uh, some of the classified exempt employees, where they may have 16 years, but they may be on a, on on the scale of nine. Okay, so once he tell you nine, you can go and look and see where they are, but it don't necessarily be years. That's, and that's what he said. Ms. Miller, I that's supervise right. payroll, so I know clearly how to read salary schedules. Well, all I'm, what, asking, for this, all I'm asking for Mr. Green is to, and for this board, if we want to approve this, because I don't know how many times I've been on this board and superintendents have walked to us and told us the salary schedule is flawed, the salary schedule have inconsistencies or whatever, and what ended up ultimately happening is people are still not paid based on the scale and there are certain people who are still unfair based on other people. And whether or not that is happening, I don't know and don't really care. I'm just asking to be able to verify the validity. That's all I'm asking. And, and so, um, Chairman, let me say this was my dad. Um, ultimately, where we are striving to go and how the schedule was developed is that with the exception of the hourly employees and the teachers who will be based strictly on years experience, everybody else will be placed on step based on their evaluation. And so to answer your question when you start talking about is there fairness in the systems, I want this to be, be very clear. Ultimately where we're seeking to go and because this is how the structure is that at the end of a year, an employee will be evaluated. And then doing that evaluation, it will be determined whether that employee will move up one step or stay at the same step or even move up two steps. 
but, but that will be a function of the evaluation. So in terms of you being able to look at a particular employee and determining um, what his or her step would be based on their years, even in comparison to other people, no, that, that, that would not happen. But then even more so, now it sounds like you're saying that if employees are not going to, for lack of a better word, kiss up to their supervisor, then they subject to get a bad evaluation and then they can't get a step. And we know that happened in life and we know it happens all the time. So what is there going to be in place to assure, I mean, because when people come to work for us, they don't have to like their supervisor. They come to work to do a job. So how can you assure that there's going to be fairness? Because if that's what you're recommending, then you're taking this thing farther than from what it already is. But you're blaming it on inconsistency. And that's why I asked you to be able to show us specifically, you know, where those inconsistencies were and what you have on that schedule didn't look like it, it should equate to $375,000 worth of um, additional uh, money for certain people, why certain other people are going to get nothing. Ms. Yeah. Renee, I'm, I'm a little confused as to what. Yeah, because this is all confusing. Well, I, it's, it's very clear to me. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very clear about what we recommend. Then you should get the answer question. I have. No, you didn't answer the question. Yeah, I, I, I have. Then how can I, how can this board, how can this information be validated that um, what you're telling us is actually what's happening? What do you mean? I don't understand your question. How do you validate what? That if an employee is being paid based on this 2011 schedule, okay. that there's an inconsistency in his pay or her pay compared to what you recommended for 2016. How can I show you that there's an inconsistency? Yeah. Okay, I just presented to you last time that even though MGT recommended a 1.5. That's what you told us, Mr. Green. I want to be able to validate it. Okay. I, I mean, I submitted that. No, I submitted that didn't well, come up to $375,000. That was not I, what I saw. Mr. Daniel, I submitted you what MGT recommended. Okay, can we put it on the schedule so we can go? Can we put it on this board then so we can go through it so we can make sure we both understand that we both um, have the same understanding of it? We did that last time. You didn't put that sound, you didn't put the sound schedule up there. Like the one up there docs. was the teachers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was in board docs. The teachers. Email. I mean, we've gotten all the information has been. But see, Ms. Reed, you like to sit over there at the chair and allow this. This is not about that. Yeah. How about let's continue the discussion either on the salary schedule but you or we'll go to make the decision as to whether or not Mr. Green is going to allow us to go through the schedule. You know, we get a whole bunch of stuff thrown at us in board docs, and it's up to each individual board member to come up with their own interpretation. And then when we ask questions so that we can all have the same understanding, and then you don't want to take the time to go through it. We went through it. We no, you didn't have to. No, you didn't. That no, you, didn't. you did not. Okay. Since we have no further discussion, no, Mr. Fred. Right. Quick question. Okay. This will take effect for the upcoming fiscal year, which we're having third reading on the budget. Obviously, this is not in the budget right now. Where are we anticipating to get the extra half million dollars? Okay. okay that, that's a good question, Mr. Fred. Um, I, we anticipate that based on what we have done over the last three years that we will have uh, a fund balance similar to what we have had this year. Uh, and so our hope is that we will get some of that through savings uh, that we are able to realize throughout the course of the year. What we don't get through savings, uh, we'll pull it out of the fund balance for next year. Okay, now that brings even another whole different, so Madam Chair, we are at third reading of the budget. This was not presented to us up to third reading. And now we're being asked to approve something that's going to be incorporated after we've had third reading, after we've had the uh, public hearing. Is that what we're doing? Yes. I think that borderlines, um, Mr. Chair, Mr. Um, legal counsel. Third reading, and <laughs> we get ready to approve something that hadn't been presented to us up until this point. Madam Chair. What's your question? Oh, go ahead. I, I, I do the guarantees because from second reading to third reading, you have to list out specifically what changes that you made. So if we're going to approve the budget now, incorporating something for third reading that is just being presented to us tonight. It wasn't part of the public hearing, so the public doesn't know that we was going to put another $375,000 in the budget. I, mean, I understand what you're saying, but 
the discussion you've been having tonight is at a public meeting, so it's not like you are trying to take some action without having public um, discussion about it. Mr. That. Legal Counsel, I understand what you're trying to do, but there is a process by which the budget is passed. And the public hearing is supposed to have everything in it that we're going to approve for the budget. And once you have that public hearing, you don't make changes to the budget. And then when you go to third reading, that's when you actually vote on third reading. So if there's going to be a change, that change has to come after July 1st. And then you got to go through the process for approval again. The changes can be made to the budget after the hearing, after the public hearing. I would sure would like to see where you read that. When we've been working, not Madam Chair, when we've been working with this budget for the, um, several months now, why wasn't this brought up prior to that? It was brought up last month. A few things about it, not any big changes like this. It was commented about checking into it. That was the comment that was stated. But the uh, presentation was made at the last meeting presentation of, of just the teachers as far as making reference to the first two steps you know that we were lower than the Columbia and Lexington County Richland County yeah and, it, and that was in addition to the um, discussion about the MGT salary study not being 100% implemented that was also part of the presentation so mr. Frick one final question of course we, we, we look Every month, we look at teachers that, that leave the district, and of course, there's been some concern expressed about why teachers leave. Obviously, one of those reasons could be money and what they're making. What, what does this do for our competitiveness if we if we approve this? What, what does this do? I mean, obviously, we're looking at a 2011 study, yeah. but, but what is that going to do for us? Well, and, and so I, I run into Mr. Fred in terms of our teacher schedule, as I presented last time. By year three, our teacher schedule, our teacher schedule. Are as high as any of our surrounding districts. As a matter of fact, we are higher than all of our surrounding districts by year three. Uh, and, and so the reason that occurs is that uh, those other districts have started them out at year zero at a bit higher salary, uh, but it, uh, not giving them increments to the extent that we are giving them increments. And so it, it improves our competitive advantage. Uh, although we are not doing necessarily what they're doing, which is to give you a higher salary at zero and one and maybe no increase at two or three, uh, we still have increases built in, but we are looking to show off the amount of the starting salaries in year zero, one, and two. So, um, Madam Chair, Mr. Green, how, what, how many teachers are going to be impacted by this? I, I can tell you this, like Danny, I don't know how many teachers we have that are at year zero, one, or two. Because when you just explained to the, explained this, teachers weren't going to be getting this increase. This increase is going to other folks. Yeah, I didn't say that. You, you asked me a question about the non, I mean about the exempt non-instructional staff. Well, it clearly states on the document that you have uh, that we have increased the teacher scale um, $500 was added to step 0, 1, and 2 for bachelors. 550 was added at step 0, 1, and 2 for bachelors plus 18. I mean, all of that is clear to stay on the schedule. You know, it was not clear to stay on the schedule, and that's why I actually put it up on the screen so that we can all look at it and see it. And you, you refuse to put it to put it there and explain it in elementary terms so it can be clearly understood so the next superintendent that come in here won't be coming to us, shooting us, and hoodwinking us again by the salary schedule that's going to further divide. Because you know the way you're offering this, there are certain people in here who are going to get, in this district, who are going to get raised. That's going to be unfair to others. And you know it's going to happen. No, no, I don't know that. Yeah, you know. And for the record, the proposed salary schedule for teachers is in, right there, and we've had that for a number of days. It's on the, um, under the board docs under administrative content. And my next question is, has the state, um, told us what we have to give the teachers this year? We already have a step building now schedule. So the state said that we have to give the teachers one step? Well, and, and so the, the, the session is still going on, but we plan to give them a step. Yeah, I mean. So what if they come back and say two? I, I don't think that's going to happen. Madam Chair, can we get a copy of um, the documentation that comes from the State Department of Education telling what um, increase the teachers going to get? And there's a lot of information that we've asked for that, for whatever reason, we don't get. 
So can um, we be assured, and I went on record, that I'm asking for that information to be distributed to the board when it comes out? The mandated step increase for teachers from the State Department. What? It'll come from the legislature. It well, usually come from the State Department to the districts. Madam Chair. We'll have that information. I'd yes. just like to say that, you know, for our teachers, for all our employees, but especially our teachers, being that we are in a rural area, everybody know, you know, we stay here in Winsboro, and a lot of our teachers, they stay in Columbia. And so we got to be competitive. Uh, you know, I would love to see, you just be, I would love to see some type of community housing, you know, for our, for teachers, University of South Carolina, something like that, that we can, you know, work with the county and something that, that, that we can have that if you promise to teach so many years here, hey, you can come to our district, you can give us five years. I mean, those are all type of incentive because we are in a rural area. <laughs> you know, you have to be competitive. We have to be competitive. And that's the thing, and that's why we, we lose some teachers, some because, we, I love Winsboro. We ain't had no bowling alley. We don't even have a, a, a movie. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just things that young people have to have. That's, that's face it. You know, and they coming out of school, coming to University of South Carolina, they're going to stay in Columbia. I would love to have something that entice them to come to Winsboro. And so, you know, money, yeah, it's incentive, but even going further than that, something, some type of housing. I know that's in the future, but I just had to put that on the record. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've exhausted the discussion. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Those in favor of the superintendent's recommendation that the board approve the uh, modified salary study to actually the uh, 2011 MGT standard that was presented. Um, please signify by the raising of the right hand. One, two, three, four. Opposition? Two. Thank you. Madam Chair, I would like the record to reflect that we are changing the budget after the public hearing, prior to voting on the third reading. And I'm concerned as to the legalities of that action being taken by the school board. Thank you. Any further announcements? We'll move on. Dr. Edwards. Um, good evening, Madam Chair, or Trustee Superintendent Green. Um, tonight, uh, the superintendent is presenting three field trips for Fairfield Central High School. The first trip is a senior trip to take place April 28th through May 1st in Orlando, Florida. The second field trip is a basketball overnight camp to take place June 13th through the 14th in Queens College in Charlotte, North Carolina. Item three is a football camp August 3rd through the 6th of this current, current calendar year and it will take place at South Carolina State University. Um, the documentation supporting all of these trips has been um, uploaded to board docs and it also includes board policy IJOA, which governs um, the approval of field trips. Madam Chair, I'd like to accept the superintendent recommendation on items one, two, and three. Provide a negative second. Thank you, Mr. Miller. I'll chair, I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Fred. Are there questions or discussion? Yes, ma'am. Quickly, on the um, the class trip, that is not being paid for by the school district, correct? That is correct. That's just being presented to us because it's a overnight field trip. Overnight field trip. May follow up on that. We talked about this last year, year before, somewhere about is there some way we can make this where we do not have to seem like we're sanctioning this senior trip? Has, has there been any further looking at that? It's just a little concerning that, it, and we're not paying for it. We're just saying, please go to your trip and you're on your own. I don't, I don't understand why the board needs to be involved with that. And we had talked about it before. Have we looked at it anymore about where we didn't have to do that? Um, Mr. Frick, uh, and, 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 you know, and I kind of hit on this, I think, on my first year here, uh, several districts don't necessarily get in the business of sponsoring senior trips anymore uh, for, for multiple reasons. Uh, we didn't have a senior trip on last year. 
Uh, we had one the year prior, and I think maybe one my first year. Um, and, and, and I can tell you what the conversation is with those seniors um, who, who have entertained the prospect of doing a trip without the school being involved. Uh, and, and so what they've indicated to me is parents and students simply don't buy into it unless the school is somehow affiliated with it. And so if, if Mr. Milmer, Mr. Robinson, uh, and Mr. Green just said, right, we're going to get together, we're going to get the kids together, they're all seniors, we're going to do the research, we're going to sponsor it just as parents and as kids. Um, very often seniors just won't participate. And so, um, I, you know, I, I kind of share that sentiment. Uh, you know, I, I think it would be awesome uh, if we didn't have to get involved at all in terms of providing chaperones uh, and helping to sponsor it. Uh, but, but, but seniors have pretty much expressed that they aren't able to get the support unless the school sanctions it. Adam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Am I not correct that this is the, the day of graduation that when they're leaving? The day of graduation? The day that they graduate to, to go on this trip? In other words, they've already graduated? No? No. Okay, we're not liable for the trip if somebody gets hurt as far as liability. In terms of, I mean, it's a school sponsored event. Right. Yeah, I mean, so that's no different than going to the zoo or, you know, going to DC summer. I mean, any school sponsored event. And so there's always going to be a certain amount of liability if it's just a school sponsored event. So what's the date of the um, of the senior trip? April 28th to May 1st. And that's spring break? Um, that is not spring break. Our spring break on our calendar is May 25th through March the 31st. The sponsor of the trip um, does not hold, hold this particular event um, during the time that our spring break is taking place. So the students going to be out of class how many days? That Friday, Thursday, they leave at 12, 12 midnight. So basically they'll miss Friday. Interesting. So you're saying that we're not paying for anything on this? No. We're not mm -hmm. providing the transportation? I mean, kids have to pay for the transportation now. Yeah, so we aren't paying for it. I mean, whatever, whatever the cost of the trip, transportation will be included in that, and kids would have to be responsible for that cost as well. We provided the bus? They are likely, it would be my guess, we saw them in charter bus. Uh, if they are going to Florida, it probably wouldn't be a district bus. I was thinking as um, Mr. Frick had stated that um, last year or two years ago that we were saying that we were going to try to get out of this and I was thinking that we did not do anything last year. And you are correct, Ms. Hawk. Yeah, we did not have a senior trip last year. And I'll tell you what students that I've spoken to have indicated is that when the school does not kind of put their name on it and sponsor it, they generally do not have it. At least not in this community. And the other um, trips, as far as the football and was the other basketball, uh, are, are, what are we paying on that? Whatever the cost, I mean, that, that's a function of those athletic programs. Um, and so the athletic programs are responsible for that cost. What would they be getting out of that? About going to a football game? Yes, sir. Uh, hopefully some better football players. Uh, I mean, the hope is that they improve their skills, uh, that they come together as a team. Uh, they, they will become a better unit and better players. A lot of times, things like that, Madam Chair, excuse me, they bring in professional athletes. Uh, I remember when I, when I used to go back in old Winsboro High, we used to go to Belmont Abbey. And uh, Monty Tao, man, that joker hit 78 free throws with his left hand, not his right hand. But it just, you, you be around those type of professional people who can play. And those just, those little, those little things that they can teach you. So, 
Absolutely. It, it'd be professional standard. Madam Chair. How many of our athletes got scholar, scholar, received college scholarships this year? Let's stay with the discussion about this, please. It is about this. Well, I, this I'm going right. to say let's stay with the discussion about the trips. So we've, we've exhausted that, that and we'll, we'll vote. vote. In trying to run this board like it belongs to you, Madam Chair. It does not. This is uh, my discretion as no, the chair. Yes, ma'am. It is. The discussion yes. will pertain to the, at the action, the motion at hand. And I'm asking the question based that on that which does not question. apply. Any other questions or you discussion? You me how to make my decision on how I'm going to vote. You don't and have, I'm not trying to determine your vote. I don't know how many of okay. students got um, scholarships. All those in favor of the superintendent's recommendation that the board approve the three field trip requests. Please signify by the raising of the right hand. One, two, three, four. Opposition. Keep on following her up. Thank you. Don't care nothing about these students in this district. All you want to do we'll is move to down. operations and finance. Everything that comes along. We'll move to operations and, and finance. No Ms. McKinney, we're, we're out of sense. order. That's enough. Did we'll move to here? operations what? and finance. Y'all see him just, just, just go along with it. You're out of order. Please cease. I'm going to cease with it because you hit that gap. <coughs> The first item in the, the agenda under operations and finance is a facilities usage request and the superintendent recommends the board approve the waiver of fees for Gethsemane Church and Sunday School Union um, at Corey Liston School of Technology from June 28th to July the 2nd. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Accept the superintendent's recommendation for this facility request and waive the fees regarding the second. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you, Pastor Jackson. Question or discussion? So, Madam Chair, any church that requests the request to use any of our schools are going to be allowed to use the schools? Or is there a criteria that was used to determine whether or not we we're going to allow a church to use the schools? Uh, Mr. McDaniel, I think you know, part of the issue in years past has been church using facilities for fundraising. Um, and, and so there was a policy put in place that um, the entities outside of, 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 of district entities cannot use facilities for fundraising activities. I'll tell you if there is any uh, church or organization that is seeking to use facility for a non-fundraising activity uh, as being recommended today the answer to that question is yes so you're saying that the policy states that churches can use the facilities no, no, the, the policy if i'm not mistaken states that people outside of, of school entities can't use the facilities for fundraising activities in terms of does it preclude churches from using facilities period the, 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 the answer to that is no Okay, because you put the policy in based on some of the actions that you brought to us to vote on, but I didn't see one um, in there regarding this. And I think this is the first time, to my knowledge, the church has asked to use the school for vacation, Bible school for three or four days, and we're not going to charge them anything whatsoever. Okay, and once again, Mr. McDade, that's my recommendation, of course, the board didn't have to accept. Yeah, but I'm asking you about your recommendation based on our policy. Okay, and so your question is that within our policy? Right. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. I, I, I want to, are we, is it, is it, is it the church or is the group of churches? Is it, does that come under there? Uh, Mr. Green, Dr. Green. Uh, you talking about who's, who's making a request? Right. Yeah, and, and of course this is not one single church. I mean, this is a group of churches that are requesting the use of the facility where they're coming together to do a vacation Bible school. Yeah, but my question, regardless of whether it's one or whether it's ten, it still it still applies. It has no bearing on whether or not the policy allows or prohibits or says anything regarding churches using the facilities. Like I said, it's the first time that I knew, I'm aware of 
that, um, and I'm not saying I'm against it. I'm just asking because I don't want to vote on it if there's something in the policy that, that addresses it. And, and Madam Chair, you know, I think one issue was, and this was before my tenure, Mr. McDaniel, uh, that we may have had some religious institutions that were using some of our facilities for some fundraising activities, uh, and we put some things in place that uh, restricted those outside entities from using the facilities for fundraising activities. I don't um, recall churches that were using our facilities for fundraising. Mm -hmm. So if that happened, the board must then approve it. Oh, no, what, 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 what happened? Uh, I remember that we were we were having uh, gospel events over to the, in the auditorium. They were charging at the door. They had these big, big gospel, uh, you know, uh, five blind boys, like five or ten of them. And so they were making them. And I think that that's so right before I got it. Uh, huh? Well, they slipped it in there. They probably they slipped it in there. Okay. But I think that, that was that was put in there because of that. Yeah. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I'd like to ask, um, do they normally have that particular Bible school and do and do you know whether they have it at a, at a what other location in the past? <coughs> I'm sorry, in the past? I mean, sorry, I don't know whether they've had it in the past. I mean I think they they've done it before. Uh, obviously they've not used one of our facilities in the past. Uh, so this is, as Mr. Daniel said, this is, uh, I think, the first time that they've used a school facility. Because that particular one I, I had was under the understanding that it was a pretty big church. So I was just curious why they didn't use, <clears throat> wanted to use the school instead of the church. Yeah. Is it the union? Sunday school union, yes. Other questions? Okay. Just a point. Sure. Point of clarification. I right, if this is a group, um, then the signature that's on here uh, represent. <laughs> we call it the, the Gethsemane request should more than one person have signed this request if it's a group Reverend Jackson I, I think this gentleman of course I spoke to him on the phone and, but he ended up going to a court list and actually fill out the request for usage form uh, I think he is representing the association for lack of a better word okay and so this union involves, I think, several churches on the western end of the county, but he's just representing them to try and preserve the facility. Yeah. President. President. Yeah. Is there going to be um, additional custodians out there during this event, or is, is it during the regular time when the custodian would normally be there? What, what, what are the times again? I, I haven't really looked at the times. Uh, Six to nine p.m. What, what I would say, uh, Mr. McDaniel, is I'm going to assume that the uh, the seminary union is going to do a good job of tidying up the place. And so therefore, I don't think we're going to have a need to bring in any additional custodial staff. And I'll be having that conversation with the president of the union to ensure that they do a good job keeping things clean. Any further questions? We have a motion. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm looking at the facilities uses uh, liability agreement and it says to abide by all 
Baltimore School Board policies, rules, and regulations governing the use of school facilities. Now, just that number one there should cover uh, and, and answer the question about extra janitorial staff. When we say school board reg uh, policies, rules, and regulations governing the use of school facilities, do we have in that policy now, maybe in a new, a new board member, um, maybe I should have looked it up or whatever, I, I don't know, can somebody show me uh, where it's written in our policy that, that they're responsible for cleaning up? It said they assume the responsibility for repairing equipment and so forth uh, and to hold the district blameless for injuries and that kind of thing. It says repairing equipment and so forth, but nowhere does it say cleaning up. And, and, and Pastor Jackson, what I'll say is I'm not sure whether the policy explicitly states that they are required to provide um, additional janitorial staff. Um, I think that has just been a a practice. Yeah. Uh, if if that you know it is it is determined that because of additional cleanup that may be necessary uh, that we have we brought in some additional staff from time to time uh, for various events and, and those individuals have been responsible for that cause oh, okay that, that, that's that's what i was accustomed to um, uh, you know back in the day yeah. we did it uh, they were responsible for paying to have that done yeah. and, and uh, usually they would pay our custodians to do it and so, Pastor Jackson, I guess what I'll say is we are we are extending uh, um, a little latitude, for lack of a better word, to our, uh, our faith-based partners. Uh, I would say that this is uh, uh, this is beneficial uh, not only to the faith but the community, uh, but also to the educational community uh, because we are keeping our young folks uh, actively involved in some very meaningful uh, meaningful activity. So. Um, I think it is, um, it would be prudent on our part to try and do all we can uh, to try and meet them halfway with providing some support. Any more questions or discussion? All those in favor of the superintendent's recommendation that the board approve the waiver of fees for Gethsemane Church and Sunday School Union facility usage request from McCrory Liston School of Technology for June 28th through July 2nd, 2015. Please signify by raising your right hand. One, two, three, four, six. Thank you. The next item in the board packet is the finance reports presented for the month of May 2015 for information. Madam Chair. Yes. Is it appropriate at this time to ask a question regarding the transfers? They in the side pocket? No, yes. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, you want to wait till we get down? No, the funding flexibility transfer. I think this would be appropriate. Yeah, I, no, no, um, no ma'am, I was talking about the, um, yeah, the transfers number three under the side pocket. If um, Mr. Robinson can explain those, I was, they weren't reading across. Explain the budget transfers. You got the original budget, then you have the change, and then the amended. So shouldn't the amended be the original plus or minus the change?
see a couple of, looks like most of them that is the case. I have to research and, and find an answer as to why that's not the case on, uh, at least I know this first one and the second one is not. Well, I'm not sure. It's the, it's the majority of them. And maybe just the ones where you're adding, maybe. Okay, if, Madam Chair, if you could just revisit that. I just want to be sure that that was not what it was supposed to be. Okay, Madam <coughs> We can receive that updated for information later. Thank you. Next item in the board packet is the TAN resolution, and the superintendent is recommending approval of a tax anticipation note not to exceed $6,275,000. Uh, the tax anticipation note is a, is a loan that's used to help the district just meet its cash flow requirements because uh, many of our expenditures occur at the beginning of the year or during the year when we don't have the majority of our property tax revenue. So this is a vehicle to help us have a bridge uh, until we receive the majority of our property tax revenues in January. Madam Chair, make a motion to approve the tax, tax anticipation note um, as, as recommended. Thank you, Mr. Frick. Thank you, Pastor Jackson. Question or discussion? That's your question. Um, of course, I'm a proponent of having a fund balance and a very healthy fund balance. I think it's very important for our debt rating and whatnot, uh, and, and, and just having a, a good financial basis. But we're getting a healthy financial uh, um, balance. Do we anticipate in the near future I will not have to vote on one of these very shortly? And, and possibly maybe next year, I'm just wondering, could, could it be fun? No, you just gave it away in all this um, salary. Um, the nasty question, Mr. Frick, uh, it, it is our hope that if we can get the fund balance to a certain point that we will no longer have to do a tax efficient payment. Tax anticipation note. Uh, Kevin and I have spoken about that uh, just as uh, early as today uh, to talk about where the fund balance needs to be in order for us not to have to do that tax anticipation note. Uh, and we're currently trying to figure out exactly what that number is. Of course, that number changes when the budget changes. Um, uh, but but I, I'm not sure we'll be there by next year, but I don't think we're very far from that. Uh, anything like that, Kevin? I'll just add the that the, uh, the last time we did not do one, our fund balance was about eight point, about eight point eight million dollars, but our, our budget itself was only about thirty million dollars. So at, at that time, the um, you're talking about fund balance that was almost thirty percent of the budget, and you know right now we're not there. So even though we're increasing the fund balance, we're still at a lower level in our fund balance than we were back in two thousand and five. So it's just a matter of consistently contributing to it uh, before we're able to get there. Thank you, Mr. Fred. Other questions or discussion? I'm sure to be sure I understand. We have a fund balance currently of six million dollars. Six point seven. Currently, the fund balance. As of the end of last year, six point seven million. Okay, we're asking for ten of. 6.2? Up to 6.2 million. But I think your schedule had 5 point something. So we talking roughly about $11 million to get us through January 15th, or whenever SCNG brain day up, check to us. That's correct. Okay. And we hope for that, we're gonna get rid of the need for a TAN at $8 million? 
No, I said that the last time we did not have one, we were at 8.8 .8 million, and the budget was 30 million. Uh, the higher the budget goes, the, the higher the increase for the fund balance to eliminate the need for that TAM. And I'm, I'm saying it in the same manner here. Um, why I do believe it's important to have money in the savings account. But I just want to caution and hope that we wouldn't try to save money at expense of not delivering services to any particular student for the year in which the money is generated. Because the tax dollars are paid and generated in the year that they are paid and generated for the children of that particular year. Not to save for some unknown future. And for the record, I would like that place in Thank you. Any other comments? Those in favor of the superintendent's recommendation that the board approve the tax anticipation note not to exceed $6,275,000, please signify by raising of the right hand. Six zeros. Thank you. The fourth item is the third reading of the fiscal year 15-16 budget. The superintendent's recommending board approval of the third reading of the fiscal year 15-16 budget in the amount of $37,401,195 with operations millage of 203.1 and approval of the attached budget resolution to be sent to the county. There have been no changes uh, since the second reading. Madam Chair, make a motion we approve the budget on third reading. Second Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Frey. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Questions or discussion? Quick question, because I keep hearing this. We're increasing spending, but we are not increasing taxes, correct? Exactly. One more time, for the record, can we explain how this has occurred? Because I don't want to hear this question anymore. I know I will get it, but you want to say again? The increases due to an increase in the tax base, which means that the, the tax rate, uh, the tax millage of 203.1 can remain the same because the, the tax base is, is larger than it was in the previous year. Thank you for your thoughts. And Madam Chair, that increase in the tax base is attributed to what do you mean? And then, of course, Mr. McDaniel, that is uh, primarily due to commercial property. Um, and and I, I think I would be safe to say primarily uh, the nuclear facility is increasing in value. Uh, and, and also, let me say, and I said this at the last breakfast we had, uh, we are so fortunate that we're in a position that we do not have to entertain a village increase. Uh, when I look at uh, the surrounding counties, um, most of the counties around us are having to raise millage just in order to keep up with the increased costs. Um, you know, I was at a superintendent's meeting uh, about three or four weeks ago, uh, and it's a Midland superintendent's group, and I was one of three superintendents there uh, that were not raising millage for the upcoming year. Um, so, so we are very fortunate that we do not have to do that. Um, and, and you know, and also as I discussed, uh, when, when you do raise operational millage, uh, you are primarily raising millage uh, on industry uh, because uh, owner occupied homes, uh, as a result of Act 388, do not support uh, school operations. Say that again. You know, yeah, I mean, Act, 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 Say that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Act, Act 388, which was passed in 2006. Changed it well, only occupied residences uh, do not support school operations. So, uh, you know, the entities that uh, support school operations are primarily businesses, uh, second homes, uh, and automobiles and other properties. Uh, but but only occupied home uh, has since uh, been moved away from supporting school operations. Yes. Um, I know I missed the 45-minute um, budget work session that you all had. Did y'all discuss the student-teacher ratio in the district? And if not, um, Mr. Green, if you can tell us what the student-teacher ratio is and the number of students we have. Um, I can tell you the ratio off the top of my head, Ms. McDaniel, uh, with somewhere around 3,000 students. 
uh, I would go ahead and guess. Um, and you probably don't want me to guess. Um, How many students? I'm sorry, I didn't do that. That's around about 3,000. Thank you. Um, if, if I had to guess, I'd, I'd guess probably somewhere in the 15 to 1 ratio. And the 3,000 students includes gleams and um, child development? Not gleams, mm -hmm. yeah. But child development, yes. So including child development, we have 3,000 students? Approximately, Mr. McDaniel. I'm not, yeah, I, I don't have those numbers in front of me. And so hey, I can take you your, um, your staff, your somebody should know the exact number of students. The exact number of students for when? For this district. You mean for next year? For this year. How many did we finish with this year? How many students are, okay, when you sent the last report you sent to the State Department, you had to tell them how many students was in the district. And or when you sent the information to the School Board Association to determine how much money we paid by fees there, you had to tell them how many students in the district. So how many students do we have in this district? Well, that would be based, Mr. Daniel, on, on a 135-day count at, at some point in time. And so if the question is, how many students do, do we have at 135-day count? I would just give you a way to come up with the number. So how are you right. going to come up with it? Well, and so that, that was my point. If you're asking me to tell you how many students that we're projected to have next year, you're asking me to tell you how many students we have at 135th day count. Uh, it, it, that's my question when you say how many students. That's why I'm giving you an approximate figure. Okay. Um, it is before June 30th, so we're still into 1415. I said, okay. how many students do we have this year? I could not tell you, Mr. Daniel, how many students we have right now today. Okay, then how many do we have projected to satisfy this budget? How many do we have projected? Yeah, when well, y'all did the budget, y'all, I'm sure y'all consider how many students we have. Y'all uh, did not? Well, what we did is we projected, and, and so we looked at uh, what, what we project enrollment to be on next year. We project enrollment to be about where it is on this year. That's um, well, that's what we would get. And what is that number? Yeah, I said about 3,000. <laughs> 3,000? 3, 3,000. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Nanny, I can't tell you 3,100. Well, I'm just concerned because when we got the fee for the school board association, mm -hmm. it was 2,800 and something. And, and our, so if we've increased by 100 and some students, then, you know, that's great. But I would think that. But just the size, we would have the number of students at our, our, at our fingertips to be able to rattle off at any point in time. But if we don't, then, okay. Madam Chair, my other question is, um, and you might as well ask you this, um, Mr. Green, the superintendent's contingency, what are we spending that money on next year, specifically? What I are could, the plans? What are the plans? I know you probably don't know. Yeah, I could tell you everything, Mr. Daniel, but, but, but a couple of things that you can be assured of. Uh, we'll be supporting the Bowtie Club. We'll be supporting uh, the Elite Ladies Organization. Uh, I have, uh, from time to time, requests uh, from staff to provide assistance with, um, you know, maybe we want to send some teachers uh, to a specific conference or something that they can't necessarily do out of their budget. Um, uh, it, it could be a host of things. So I, I'm not able to tell you everything we're spending on next year. But, but those are the things you can, you can rest assured we'll do. And what, what is the academics connected to the Bow Tie Club and the Elite Ladies? Oh, wow. I mean, I, I could go on for days there, Ms. McDaniel. I mean, as, I mean, as, well, I will. I mean, as it relates to <laughs> the students every day teaching and learning. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so let, me, let, me, let me just say it like this, Ms. McDaniel. But, but I just need you to answer the question. Well, well, it's, yeah. student teaching and learning. That's well, what I mean. well, it's not that simple of an answer. Okay, then, Madam Chair, yeah. I will draw the question. Okay. Okay. I will draw the question. Okay. I will draw the question. Any other questions or discussion? My other question this year is, I'm again requesting a printout from the system of um, the money that we've spent, that uh, Mr. Green have spent based on um, the board approving that contingency account. This is the third year and I continue to request it and have yet to receive, to receive it from the um, automated accounting system. And, and I think the appropriate um answer has been given as to why so we, we, we'll just go around and around I guess another year on that one all those in favor of this was that proper answer on that material because I hadn't received one thing that Mr. Green has said is that he's given us an Excel spreadsheet and that I don't want it in that format that's correct that's and the only reason you would give an Excel format is because you extract in the data and once you extract the data then you can distribute whatever you want to if you send it from the system then you are given exactly what it was sent on so I don't understand the problem with it being given directly from the system. 
Yeah, can I cast you to that one, yeah. one, one final time? Um, you know, Mr. Daniel, what, what I provided you when you made that request was a breakdown of all the expenditures we had from that account. Now, if, if I were just to provide you something from the system, you would have no idea what those expenditures were. Excuse me? You would have no I would idea. read everything that's on the report if you would provide it. Okay, so if you saw a report, how would you know what that expenditure was? Provide the report and then I can explain everything that's on the team. I'm very familiar with CSI. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, I guess this would be a question that I had asked um, at the last meeting. Um, um, the classes uh, that was for summer school was mentioned about, it was basically the, the high level students and I asked if we could check let's, students, let's stick to the, the board. Let's, I'm sorry, let's stick to the budget, the third reading of the budget. That's where we are. Okay, on that Eagle Fees. Um, can you tell, I wanted to know before, what are we spending maybe in the legal fees as far as the foreign teachers? Did, did, did you provide that then? Ms. Hartman, your question again, please. Do you happen to know how many foreign teachers we have? And you had mentioned that we spend some of that legal fee fees that we spend spend is because of the foreign teachers how do you can you tell me how much is spent for that doing this year i'm not sure the exact figure um is hard but um, i think it was around 15 to twenty thousand maximum what exact what can you tell me what we're paying for as far as in relation to them that was just related to sponsorship of, of teachers. Uh, Dr. Green, is there any particular, oh, how many how many teachers are there? Do you know? No, ma'am, I don't know on top of my head, Ms. Hartman, how many international teachers we have in the district. I mean, I hate to guess, um, but if I had to guess, I, I would say um, eight or 10. Somewhere in that range. Are we having problems getting teachers from other areas, you know, within 50, 60 miles? So we're switching around to get the foreign teachers? Uh, that, that's not anything new, uh, Ms. Hartman. I mean, that's been a problem, particularly in the area of science, math, and exceptional ed. I mean, districts have been exploring that option for years now. And so we are not alone in terms of seeking teachers from international sources. I mean, that's, I mean, there is a, I mean, a documented shortage uh, of science, math, and exceptional age students throughout the United States. Uh, one more question on, as far as the foreign teachers, um, are we finding any problems with the students understanding them? And of course, Ms. Uh, Ms. Hartman, from time to time, that is, that concern has been presented. Uh, and so it depends on the teacher uh, and I mean, so sometimes that happens. Uh, generally speaking, I would say no, not to a large extent. Uh, but we have international teachers that have come from the Philippines, uh, Jamaica, uh, India, I mean, several different countries. Uh, and so their accents are different depending on their exposure to English and, and what country they're from. I'd like to suggest maybe we, I don't know whether there's other ways of finding other teachers to advertise. Anyway, it's a suggestion. Um, I don't know if there's any okay. other ways that we're doing it different. But. Point taken. We'll move on to the uh, action. We have a motion and a second and discussion in the superintendent's recommendation is that the board approve the third reading for the fiscal year 15-16 budget in the amount of $37,401,195 operations millage of 203.1 and also the approval of the attached budget resolution to be sent to the county all those in favor please signify by the raising of the right hand one two three four opposition two thank you madam chair i'll let them statement for the record that i am not approving a budget where we are giving the superintendent of forty fifty thousand dollar contingency and he refuses to give a printout from the 
um, school district automated accounting system. Thank you. Some things you just don't even address, Mr. Phil. The uh, next item is funding flexibility transfer. The superintendent recommends board approval of the funding flexibility transfers transfers for the attached flexibility transfer form. Um, funding flexibility is an allowable transfer by the state in which we transfer some of our special revenue funds to other special revenue funds or to the general fund so that we can ensure that they will be used uh, during the fiscal year. Madam Chair, uh, I'd like to accept the superintendent recommendation or approval of the funding of flex, flexible uh, transfer per cash in this transfer form. Find it Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you, Pastor Jackson, for the second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the superintendent's recommendation that the board approve the funding flexibility transfers per the attached form signified by the raising of the right hand. Six zero, thank you. Uh, item number six, school building funds. The superintendent recommends approval to use $5,786.11 in Barnwell funds to pay for the cost of constructing the uh, new career and technology center. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion uh, we accept the superintendent recommendation to be, uh, excuse me, Recommend approval of the five thousand seven hundred eighty-six dollars and eleven cent in the bond bond well fund to pay for the cost of the construction of the new career career center. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Questions or discussion? Question, Chair. It just refresh my memory. This is state funds that we receive. If they're not expended, we've got to turn back in. Am I remembering that correctly? Yes, it, this is the last of uh, the funds that we have available. That's why the amount is, is so small. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. And what's the specific reason for using it for the Career Center when the Career Center was bidded out based on a maximum, whatever that terminology was? So why are we adding this to the Career Center versus it for other capital that it could be used for since it's such a small amount of money well it has to be used for the construction or renovation of, of school facilities and, and that's our the biggest only project we have currently um, involving the school facilities so that's why we're using it for that project okay but still you're not answering the question of the amount of money being extended because what it costs for the career center already been bidded, already been accepted, already been voted on. And it was a gross maximum, which means that it's not supposed to go beyond what we've already approved. But so why this money could be used for the um, career center? Oh, the deadline is spent at June 30th. Yes, ma'am. And this does not impact the, the cost of the new career center. It just supplements the, the amount of money we have to pay for the expenditures for the construction of the career center. Well, if we're going to do that, then why we couldn't do the same thing then with the, with the old career center? Because that project is, is not fully underway, so I just told it doesn't matter either way. Still, we have capital funds that will be used for either one. It really doesn't make a difference. Well, it's just that when you do it against the career center, it appears that you're putting more money when we already voted on what the maximum cost is for the career center. And it's like we're putting it there just to transfer it somewhere else. So we put it in there because we, they come back and we approve something additional or. 
I mean, I'm, I'm just not understanding the logic for putting it here. And so, Mr. Daniel, yeah, and I, I, what's the about getting? I think it's about six, seven, eight thousand dollars. Yeah, right, around right six thousand dollars. And so, Mr. Daniel, we are required to transfer that into a, a, a capital account. Um, I, I would suspect uh, that if we don't use that money uh, for the new career center, then we'll use that money for the old career center. Um, that, that we could still utilize those funds. I guess my concern is putting it with the new career center when we've already maxed out. We should not be paying any more money on the new career center. And, and let me say this, Mr. Day. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't anticipate that we will. Uh, there is always the option that we may. Uh, and just to give you an example, uh, you know, one thing that was not included uh, in the price that they presented to us that you have advocated for uh, is to have a covered walkway from the middle school. Uh, to the to the career center, that would be a change order uh, that would result in an additional cost. And you know what? That really should not be a change order, and they should have to eat that because that should have been part of what we bid it out. And if they fail to bid it out, then that should be their problem and not ours. Because okay, then did we consider the other people who bid it and whether or not they included it, or did architect mess up and not make it part of or, or whoever? Was supposed to do the drawings and, them, and they did not make the part of what they were bidding on. So, the, so Mr. McDaniel, the, the, the bid is based on the, the, the drawings developed by the architect. And okay, so, so the was the covered walkway for the middle school part of the drawing? No. And why wouldn't it have been? And, and I'm not even sure that, that it can be. I mean, I think there are still some questions in terms of if you have buses traveling there, rather OSF is even going to approve you doing a couple of walkways. So, I mean, that, you know, I understand that you are saying that you think it's something that needs to happen. I, I'm not even sure rather that- No, 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 let's, let's be clear, Mr. Green. I'm not saying it's something that should happen. Okay. When the drawings were done for the career center. Okay. Now, you're talking about after the fact, when they got to try to fix something that, for some reason, all the eyes that was looking at it didn't pick up on it. Now, when the career center was done, it should have been noted that students were going to be transferred from the middle school to the career center in walking distance and would be walking, just like from the high school to the career center walking, and we considered a covered walkway for the high school, but we did not consider one for the middle school. So don't act like this is something that Annie McDaniel just osmosis came up with. When I went over there to visit and I asked about the, the covered walkway, is when I was told that it was not thought of whatever the drawings were done. And, and so the, the, what the point I'm trying to get you to understand is the difference between the walkway between the high school and the career center and the middle school and the career center is that we have bus traffic that goes through that through And through the point I'm school. trying to make to you is if it would have been considered on the front end, then the whole sketch may have been drawn different. It would have had to be drawn different. They couldn't, they weren't going to just come tell us, oh, y'all want to cover walkway where well, we not, y'all can't have one. There's no way that we can put it over there. Of course, when they've got to go back now and write a wrong, they're going to tell you all these different obstacles as to why they can't do it, and of course, because it wasn't considered. But well, just to answer your question, Mr. McDaniel, the, 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 the bid that was submitted was based on the drawings that were submitted. And of course, that was not a part of the drawings. And, and in the event, I'm quite sure that this board instructs me to ask them uh, to explore adding a covered walkway, um, if OSF allows it, um, then I'm quite sure MDCon will be more than willing to do it and the architects will be willing to draw it, uh, and then they'll let us know what it costs. Well, what I would like you to do is ask the Arizona Missions and Shakespeare <coughs> because it should have been considered. There is no reason why if, if the architect knew, unless we didn't tell them that, and then it's an error on our part, but if the architect was aware, and we should have told them students were going from the middle school to the career center, that should have been part of the drawings. As I said, Mr. Day, they weren't part of the drawings, and, and I'm not even sure rather they can be. Did we make them aware of it? Yes, yes, yes. They were. We made them aware of it, and the architect didn't put it there. Yes. Then I actually to check the Arizona Missions Insurance. Arizona Missions Insurance. Correct, because they made an error. If we told them that the students were going to be traveling, and they didn't put the cover walkway, As I, as I said, I'm not even sure whether you can put a cover walk with them, Ms. McDaniel. Uh, that's something that OSF would have to weigh in on 
because there is bus traffic that will travel between the middle school and the career sound. And so you would have to have a covered walkway that would have some, some pretty high clearance. I, you know, I, I'm not sure about how that would, whether that's even something that can happen. But I'm willing to ask Colin about it to see whether that's something they can explore. They already aware. They was aware the night they came, so they should be giving you some options. Okay, back to the uh, action at hand. Superintendent's recommendation is the board approve $5,786.11 in formal funds to pay for cost of construction at the new Career and Technology Center. Those in favor of us signify by raising up right hand. Four, five, opposition, one. Thank you. We'll move to human resources. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, this evening for your approval, item one, certified resignations and terminations. The superintendent re recommends the board approve resignations and terminations for certified staff members at the conclusion of the 2014-15 school term. That is in Exhibit 1A. Madam Chair, make a motion we approve the certified resignations and terminations in Exhibit 1A. Second. Discussion. Are any of those uh, under the um, Hendon Pine Suitable replacement? Yes. Can I amend the motion to add that they're not to be released until we find a suitable replacement? Mr. Fred? Uh, no objection to that motion. Uh, any amendment? Another second. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. I want to put on the record that um, this is seven more teachers we've lost or want to leave and we've had 30 last month and three the month before. Okay. Maybe if we pay them more they say. Yeah. No. No. That's not the superintendent. I'm sorry. You got your smack. I got mine. Okay. <laughs> well, some of these motion and second have been made. Superintendent's recommendation that the board approve resignations and terminations for certified staff members at the conclusion of the 14-15 term provided that a suitable replacement is found. All those in favor signify by the raising of the right hand. Six. Thank you. Madam Chair, I had requested, um, you said you would put on the agenda. I was wondering when you, when you were going to bring that up as far as getting the resignation letters for the last two school years. Ms. Hartman, if that was your understanding, then um, I, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't state that to make that as an understanding. I, there is not a way to get resignation letters. Dr. Green made it clear that a lot of teachers or other staff members just don't return their contracts. So I, that's not something I said. If it was misunderstood by my part, I apologize. But I, that is not something that I would get for the board. In this way. is something that used to be done before he was on as superintendent. Okay. Well, then so that's prior administration. That was, given, that was given for every resignation uh, that was presented in the past years before. I look back. Okay. So I'd like to know. So you. So what you're what you're saying is you're. We're not going to provide resignation well, letters. I, I, that's I, what I, I'm I saying. I like to have it as a vote. You don't have. You don't. You're one vote, not the rest of them. Okay. I'm not going to provide. You asked me to provide them, and I said I will not provide resignation okay. letters. I, I'd like to have put up for a vote. Okay. Um, well, okay. right now we're I going to move on to, to, to the action that item that. that is next on the agenda. Well, tell and me that is, when this can be brought up. That is that the board approve recommendations for certified staff. Madam so Chair, I second the motion, so we need to carry a motion. Those items are not on the agenda. <laughs> so, next for your approval um, is recommendations, certified recommendations, where the superintendent recommends the board approve the recommendations for certified staff members um, in Exhibit 2A, which also requires a special motion. Madam Chair, in regard to Exhibit 2A, I move the board accept the superintendent's request to resolve, withdraw his recommendation employee number eight be non-renewed from employment based on the reasons provided in executive session. Second. 
second it, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Frick. Mr. Miller, those in favor of the uh, superintendent's recommendation to withdraw or request to withdraw the recommendation that employee eight be non-renewed from employment based on the reasons that were provided in the executive session. Those in favor, please signify by raising up the right hand. One, two, three, four. Opposition. We're not going to discuss the singular uh, personnel issue. Person. This is about yes. Process. Opposition. Is there opposition? This is about one process. abstention. If you don't say names, you can discuss the situation. We're not going to. No, ma'am. We're not. This is a singular personnel are issue. We we're not are we going voted to. On this being withdrawn by the superintendent, or are we voted on the fact that the board voted on this? And the superintendent's recommend the, the the motion has been made. The motion, yes. So the superintendent is requesting that he withdraw. That he is actually asking us to withdraw that his request. So now we're voting on that. But it's not his request that we withdraw. It's the board's vote. This is the vote. There were four. One in opposition, and I'm not sure about the other. So we'll move on. Excuse me. This is not an attack personal no to one or you, to either you or me. This is about the business of the Fairfield County School District Board of Trustees, and let's keep it as professional as possible. Please move on. Next item: um, Superintendent recommends the board approve the recommendations for the remaining certified staff, those listed in 2A and 2B. Madam Chair. Make a motion that we uh, accept the recommendation for the professional certified staff in 2A as amended and 2B. Thank you, Mr. Frick. Mr. Miller, those in favor of the uh, board, the superintendent's recommendation that the board approve the certified staff members signify by the raising of the right hand. One, two, we've got a vote. Miller. Yes, Signified by the raising of the right hand. We've got five opposition. Abstention. No vote, Ms. McDaniel. No vote. Okay. Move on to the uh, board chair report for the announcements. Those of us that had asked to um, be signed up for the August school law conference um, that came through today. So we'll be attending at the end of August school law conference um, sponsored by the South Carolina School Board Association. The um, I have um, and I don't see. Did you get a confirmation? Yeah. It's in your packet. Because this is still here, so you're going to take these out for now. I made your reservations and I signed it up. It's in there. As far as the board retreat, the request has been sent to the school board association. I have not heard back from uh, Gwen on that. And I was wondering about a report from the ad hoc committee on uh, board compensation. But, Madam Chair, before you leave the retreat, is it possible you can get somebody else to do the retreat? Instead of um, school board association, we've had that before. And it's profit little or nothing. So, is it possible we can get somebody else? Well, let's wait and hear from them. See what dates they throw out. Madam Chair, we've been waiting to hear from them for a whole year. Okay. So, is it possible we can get somebody else? I've asked them, them at this point, Ms. McDaniel. I've asked them. So, we'll we'll stick with them for this year. Well, we've been waiting a year, just like you sent our policies down there to them that you never get, you've never uh, brought back here to us. I think we've been waiting on the chair, not her. Is there? I'm sorry. Personal attacks have no place in board business. Let's keep it professional. Let's keep it professional. Mr. Miller, do you have a report from your committee? I'm not correct that you're the one that put it off, not the, the Mr. school Miller. association. You're out of order. Madam, Madam Chair, uh, we haven't had a chance to have our meeting as of yet. We okay. We'll look forward to the report when y'all get the opportunity. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. No, I want to point a person You know, you done it. I'm not going to hear an attack, like hear an attack like on my you personal. Did stop. Did well stop then. Did, on that thing and allow board members to ask not questions. to attack individuals. No, ma'am. I'm not going to. 
the 2015-16 board meeting schedule is in the board docs. Recommendation will be made to approve that meeting schedule. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, make a motion to approve the 2015-2016 uh, school board meeting schedule. I'll second it, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Frick. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Questions or discussion? All those in favor of the 2015-16 board meeting schedule, please signify by raising your right hand. One, two, three, four. Opposition? Abstention? All right. We'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Madam Chair. Mr. Frick has made a motion. Is there a second? question from last time. There's been a second. Programs. Right. Dr. Green, can you? Okay, you can bring that up to him after the meeting. Those in favor of the adjournment, signify by raising your right hand. We got three. Opposition? Two. Thank you.